What's going on, everybody? I'm gonna be starting this new series called Tea Talk, hence my tea. And it's early, at least early for me. It's like 8.30 in the morning. Normally not an early bird, but yeah, this is pretty much a super informal, super raw, unedited kind of platform just for me to just talk about anything and everything that's on my mind. But yeah, let's talk. The main thing I really wanna talk about today is pretty much finding that difference between what you're passionate about and really wondering if it's like worth putting all your time and energy into. And what I really mean by that is when it gets to the point in which you're dedicating so much time to something that you're passionate about, when does it really become a kind of like a negative in your life, like where it's hindering pretty much day-to-day -day activities? Well, main topic of this discussion is pretty much decide that every power lifter is going to go through, no matter what stage or level that you're going to be at. Um, I know a lot of people are going to go through this. A lot of people aren't going to talk about this, but damn near, I know damn well, it's going to be in everybody's fucking description when they post their lifts, but it's talking about retiring, man, retiring or being burnt out or feeling, or feeling overwhelmed with whatever life challenges there is that's affecting like your lifts pretty much. I think for me, for the longest, I never really talked about how much stress I was dealing with. And I think for me, for the longest, I never really knew how to maintain that silver lining between how much time I would dedicate to training versus things to do outside of the gym. You know, there's been countless weeks and months periods where I would kind of revolve around my life or sorry revolve training around my life as in I would push away plans just to kind of center on that point within training like I was being too anal about it like I have to hit my numbers I have to control every variable I have to make sure it moves at the right speed the right RPE and just a lot of things like that but it's gotten me to the point where I am burnt out I know a lot of people can relate to this, where you're, where it starts to feel like a chore. Like training isn't as fun anymore, where you're consistently doing the same routine, the same RPE. Bob means you're building it, like you're loading more per week. You're either you're increasing or like uh, an extra rep and how much reps you do or increasing like an RPE. So how much you load, how like the intensity wise, but I feel like after a while, if you're not maintaining it the right way, if you're not having that balance within your life and you're like career-wise and or schooling, whatever it could be, you're gonna get burnt out. And that's what I did. I got burnt out. <laughs> it's getting to the point where there are days, there's there's even weeks where I don't wanna I don't wanna train. It's it's something that a lot of people feel and you have to really sit down to yourself, have a, have a talk to yourself and really question if you really got that dog in you, right? If you really, if you can thug it out anymore. Cause I knew when I was still in college, like I was chasing some sort of goal. Maybe it was CNATS, but at my weight and my height, um, for those that, if you guys don't know, I'm a fairly taller lifter. Like I am about 6'2", 6'3", and I'm about roughly between 245, 255, depending on if I need to cut or not, but 110 and like 6'2", 6'3". I'm a big lifter. Like I'm actually undersized for my height. Like people, <laughs> people told me that I should be in the 125s or even bigger but that doesn't justify my goals and my like 
wants or needs. Like, I don't really want to be walking around like 265, 285 plus. Like, I mean, although that's going to maximize my chances of succeeding more for my height and powerlifting, it doesn't necessarily align with my personal goals. Like, damn near the last year, like, I bought so much fucking clothes because I was, I was like eating more, trying to fill out my frame, but at some point it it has to align with what your goals are so i know a lot of college people right now i know uh collegiate national is happening probably when i'll upload this video in atlanta georgia a lot, of, a lot of those students are you know chasing that goal of trying to trying to place if not trying to place trying to better themselves as athletes oh my god trying to better themselves as athletes and really trying to get a higher place on the podium or the rankings within the weight class but what do you do after that? You know, you like your career path, your life is not consistent at all. You know, uh, I'm in a field where I, it requires some sort of travel, like depending on like some sort of clients, but unless you're like set on a specific career path where you have a consistent schedule, training is gonna be fairly easy for you to work around. Like if you have a, let's say typical nine to five job, and those are your set hours, you have specific training times that you can leverage. Like most people after the nine to five rush is over, there's that gym rush in the evening for something like six to 8 p.m. But like I said, it just all depends on your career and how it's taking you. And I feel like for me, like it's, I've been more busy with like work wise, so it's harder to find time to really work around training. And like I said, it revolves back into that. How much do you want it mentality? How much dog you got in you? Um, what else? If you can keep thugging it out or not. I think for me, I don't really vocalize how I'm feeling like stress wise or emotionally that often when it comes to training so that I found it pretty hard to really thug it out, you know? I mean, the lifts were going good. If you guys follow me on Instagram or look at some of the shorts that I've posted here about powerlifting, lifts have been moving good. Progression's been good. Bench, I finally, I, I figured like, it, it's clicking now, you know? I got, got the form right. It's going up like weights that I used to do like a one rep max for. I'm doing it for sets now. Like I think, I think the, the the key weight for me, like the baseline, powerlifters call it the baseline. Uh, for me, it's like, at least for bench, it's like fucking, like a red and yellow. Like in full transparency, I'm not the biggest bencher. I have long arms. My, my, my bench height is like at a 10 or 11. So no excuses though, but a, a red and a yellow is still fucking, you know, it makes me like, you know, shocked, like still, like, or still scared, like, oh shit, this is where I gotta, you know, lock in. But yeah, man, bench has been blowing up. Squat has been blowing up. I'm not gonna lie. I've been a little broke boy with squats. Previous squats, uh, the knee sleeves I've been using, they did have rips in the back and they were super flimsy. I mean, but that's by all means, like every equipment has its wear and tear over time like a life expectancy, but, and I've been using the same knee sleeves for like two years. Nothing on Stoic, I love Stoic as a brand. I use their uh, their wrist wraps, but these knee sleeves were, time, were more than ready to be retired. But, and once I got those A7s, man, hold on. I got the motherfucking stick, oh, hold on. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. What's backwards, oh shit. Man, I got the motherfucking sticker. Hold on. <sighs> got the motherfucking uh, wristband, the A7 Demand Greatness wristband. Bro, new sleeve, uh, new knee sleeves, and that neoprene or that like material they use, and that thickness. I know it's the same for like Inzer. I know Inzer is a really pop popular knee sleeve brand, but. Bro, that shit makes you, that bounce out of the pocket makes you feel good about your squat. Like, 
bomb means don't dive bomb don't f don't just fucking drop into your squat right away and expect to fucking bounce out of the hole but if you're controlling that shit that like thickness that material will really really like respond because it's so like thick and there's so much like energy return without getting too scientific here but yeah squats have been good the one thing that kind of did that's been like lingering in my head about my lips was probably my deadlifts. Like aside from squat and bench, um, my deadlifts weren't really that progressing. And I'm not sure if it was my, my technique, but, um, or maybe I'm, I'm plateauing on my deadlifts, but uh, the first wave of my training ever with powerlifting was a thing for me about two years ago. My deadlifts were skyrocketing. Uh, my frame, I'm a taller, lengthy, lengthier guy, so deadlifts always came easier for me. Um, yeah, so I got up to 405 pretty quick, but then since then, it, it's been slowly progressing. I feel like you hit your 500 mark, and then from there, things start to get a little bit harder. Like, it's not as easy to progress anymore. So I think right now I'm floating around maybe that 550 to 575 range for deadlifts. But man, that four reds, the whole session de de depends on how that four reds move. If it moves good, the session's going to be well if I have a single after that. But if the four reds is kind of sticky or if it's a little slow, it's going to be a tough session. But yeah, enough rambling about my lifts and my numbers. Tea break, tea break. <sighs> Let's talk more about what the future of powerlifting kind of stands with me and how life is for now. Like, I have friends who are also in PT school right now. Uh, by all means, I'm not in PT school, but... Um, there's some points where things are going to be stressful, where you can't allocate as much time to train or eat as much, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say eat as much because I know people who, like, weigh every meal, they track every macro that they put into their body. It becomes a time where you're under so much stress and, like, outside factors that are going to affect your training and you really can't dedicate, let's be honest, I know damn well each and every one of you powerlifters or gym rats or starting to powerlift, I know damn well you guys spend at least two and a half, three hours in the gym because you got your fucking compounds, you got your squat or bench or bench deadlift or deadlift bench, whatever variable, however much sets you have to do, you got that shit and you can be skipping your damn accessories, I know. I know, because I'm a fucking victim. <laughs> I do the damn, I do the damn same thing, man. And pretty much that, bro, compounds itself takes you at least an hour. Warming up, stretching, doing your warm ups on the actual compound, working up to your top set, doing your top set, resting. Resting is key. I know motherfuckers who time their rest two minutes, four minutes six minutes that factors into the total amount of time you spend at the gym and on average i've seen for myself at least if i'm not mingling with motherfuckers at the gym if i'm not talking my ass off not dabbing everybody up you know having a good time or even spotting some people on average usually at least two and a half hours like there's some of you guys who like lock in get your shit done and get out the gym i wish that was me i, I still go to a commercial gym kind of commercial gym but we have a little powerlifting section um but it's inevitable you're gonna talk to people you're gonna dab people up you're gonna film your fucking sessions you're gonna set up your fucking tripod you're gonna film your sessions and i know motherfuckers who edit their fucking their top sets me <laughs> i do my top sets and i edit them sometimes but you spend a lot of time at the gym and at some point you're gonna get burnt out Burnt out, maybe more so in a, it, it starts off for me at least, like I'm spending a lot of time at the gym 
I'm that's affecting my other plans I have throughout the day and that's affecting like and, and it's gonna get to the point where it affects like your day almost where, where like if you don't gym or if you if you have a different gym session like that's not at your normal time it's gonna affect the rest of the day because all you're gonna be thinking about is like what type of workout you have today like if you have a specific number you, you have to hit or a specific RPE that's supposed to move at. If you're a powerlifter, if you're really in tune with powerlifting, you're gonna be thinking about that shit all fucking day. Like aside from classwork or work-wise, you're gonna be thinking about that. <sighs> it's early, man. It's funny though, I can hear myself waking up by talking this much. Probably run back from the beginning of the video. My voice is super scratchy, but it's opening up now. But um, yeah, I, I've been yapping this whole time. I think the moral of this, or I guess the conclusion is kind of really find out and really think about what are your goals with powerlifting. Powerlifting doesn't pay the bills, man. I hate to break it to you guys. It's more of a recreational thing. There's like maybe the top 1%, 2% that are actually gonna get money out of this powerlifting thing. And I think, I think for a lot of people, that period between graduating college or graduating high school and like really you really need to figure out if it's kind of worth putting all that energy into powerlifting some people are a little bit different where they they got that dog in them it's probably like the fourth time i said this you got that dog in you and you're disciplined enough by all means continue powerlifting but by all means as well powerlifting does not revolve around your life or oh, sorry your life does not revolve around powerlifting as much as you make it because you have shit to do outside of powerlifting. Like powerlifting to me still, um, it's still a passion. I love powerlifting, but I finally see that it's not a big majority or it shouldn't be a big majority of my life in which I dedicate this much time every week. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way in which I'm like fucking mingling too damn much. Maybe I need to wake up early and do like the 4 a.m. type vibe. Cause I know I know people like who wake up super early, they have the rest of the day to do whatever. But I don't know, man. Just kind of figuring out where you are in your life right now. What kind of goals do you have that may or may not align with powerlifting? And if they do, if you have a meet schedule. You have a meet within like if you're like what, what fucking like 10 weeks out by all means lock in i hope you have a great meet hope you break some prs but for me i've competed twice already i plan to compete again but i just think that like adjusting period in which you have a a life switch or a life change or a career switch that's gonna be a little harder for powerlifting like if you're like moving to if you're traveling a lot it's gonna be a lot harder to find powerlifting specific equipment because once you train on a power rack a tss rack train with any um um power bars like texas bars ohio bars you're not gonna want to go back to fucking those commercial weights or the commercial bars like or bumper plates bro i fucking hate bumper plates all my life them shit suck big as shit for no reason i mean therefore like Olympic lifting, like being able to be dropped and stuff because of like kind of is more like suitable for like the, the the normal commercial gym type vibe. But man, once you go powerlifting equipment, that is the best of the best equipment, like competition equipment. And I think it's good to train at competition standards, but if you're traveling a lot, it's a little bit harder to find those specific equipments, but yeah, just really find what your goals are and how it aligns with your life at the moment. Um, I'm not trying to influence anybody in this video, but I'm just kind of speaking on how my progression of powerlifting is now. I definitely still want to maintain my strength. I'm not fucking quitting the gym or fucking quitting powerlifting. Well, powerlifting wise, I'm going to probably ease off the intensity, but still I want to maintain my strength like i have some numbers i want to hit in the foreseeable future but for now 
I'm on my last block right now. So I have the final singles of this block and probably expose my numbers out there because who really, who really gives a fuck. But I probably will shoot for maybe like a 441 squat, depending on the day. Bench, man, you guys are gonna flame my ass, but fucking, I haven't hit two reds yet. Hey, but it's getting close though. So I'll probably have a session where I do a bench single around 265. If it feels good, I'll probably bump it up to 275 because you know, if I pull up in a commercial gym, I could throw those fucking two plates on it and a 25, you know, get a little confidence booster. And then deadlifts, man, just fucking depends, man. I I like f fucked around with a lot of different bars and techniques. Obviously not a deadlift bar. I'm not one of those fucking creators who use that fucking wiggly ass bar, but I think I like the slack a little bit more, but because I'm not, I'm not training for a competition anytime soon, but um, a Texas bar is great for me. Um, Ohio bar and the TSS bar or the um, Illico bar, those are fucking stiff for no fucking reason. I mean, if you are training for a competition, use those bars because it's the most accurate like training sessions that you can have with actual competition equipment. For me, I find it a little easier for fucking to pull on the Texas bar. It's a little bit more slack, but probably sitting around maybe like the 540 range, 550 range right now, but definitely want to get 600 soon. So probably going to be maintaining the strength, probably going to do some sort of compound per week not to that extent of like intensity level when you're on like uh, an actual competition program but yeah it's enough rambling man i'll probably see how i edit this video i might chop some things up but yeah i hope if this video benefits anyone hope you can really think about if powerlifting is even worth it um I'm not one to really give advice on powerlifting or not, but really think about how it aligns with your goals. Um, obviously you have numbers you wanna hit if you're committed to powerlifting already. You've invested a lot of money and time into buying these equipment and kind of building that foundation from where you started. I'm sure I know a lot of people with a fucking SBD belt. I don't even have an SBD belt yet. <laughs> Kind of sad, but I like my Inzer belt. Inzer is cool. I'm rocking low Inzer belt, stoic, uh, um, wraps, A7 Easley. Man, I'm, I'm all over the place with brands, but I haven't gotten an SBD belt and it hasn't been a problem. But yeah, kind of think about where you are with your powerlifting journey. If you haven't competed yet, go ahead and compete. It's one of the most anabolic things out there. You know, you got the motherfucking crowd cheering for you. It's a good vibe, it's a good experience. And then afterwards, you can make a reel, you can make a post on your Instagram, your fitness page, get some likes, you know. I think the beginning parts of powerlifting are a little addicting because you're making improvements so quick. Um, but um, from there, probably hire a coach. They are a lot more knowledgeable than you are. And it'll benefit you, no, oh, excuse me. It'll benefit you like tenfold. It's like um, any technique correction, they, they know what the right form is. They know how to kind of work with how you are lifting, kind of adjust and fixing that form. Um, they know programming. Programming is fucking important in powerlifting. Like loading the right way, not really exhausting your body every single session is super important because, you know, you do, you do those little chunks per week that ultimately leads up to like you building up to like a single and you pretty much making your previous one rep max move faster. But yeah, but yeah, if you haven't competed, try to compete, advocate for USAPO or Powerlifting America now. I think that's a new federation, but super exciting journey, super, super fun, super intense at the meet. I mean, if, you're, if this is your first meet, don't worry about cutting weight or anything. I know a lot of people talk about that, but there's no need for you to fucking cut weight or make weight. 
at a lower weight that you're not normally walking around. Um, yeah, enjoy your first meet. It'll really get you used to that competition standard, competition environment. But it's after that first meet is where you want to go. Um, I think the trend or how I take it after every meet is I will, you, you really go through that programming for like each block. I think it's like three to four blocks depending on your program. But when you're at your meet, you are literally maxing out. You're exhausting your body. Maybe sometimes you have some energy left. So I always fucking signify a last deadlift pull after my meet. Like it'll be on the fucking... The, 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 the thinnest bar, the fucking deadlift bars, there's a deadlift bar that I'm fucking using pound plates and I'm fucking pulling as much as I can just to see where I'm at for the fuck of it, you know? It's a good, it's a good vibe and it, it's been fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's after that first meet is really where you want to consider if you want to, where you want to take your powerlifting journey. Um, some people are more invested where they continue in the next program right away. For me, that's what I did as well, competed twice. And then I graduated college and then life got busy. That, 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 that's, that's inevitable. Life is gonna be busy. I think eventually I do wanna compete again, but right now I'm adjusting to how my life change is and it's been hard on me. And it's okay to kind of put powerlifting on a pause, but I'm not quitting powerlifting ever. Like I love lifting heavy. I love something. There's there's something about doing a heavy one rep max that is more fulfilling than doing bodybuilding stuff. At least in my opinion, bodybuilding is it's cool, but fucking there's so much fucking factors. Like you have to control your nutrition, your and your fucking cardio and how much calories you're at. Well, nutrition, like as as much as I want to look good and have fucking a shredded body, big ass fucking guns. Um, it takes a lot of fucking work and I know a lot of powerlifters are lazy, but there's some powerlifters who are already aesthetically built as well, so they can do both. But for me, powerlifting is fulfilling for me, but at this point in my life right now, it's gonna be on pause until I like figure out my situation. Everything's chill though, it's just more so a kind of like a roadblock on how much time and how much effort I want to put into powerlifting. But yeah, <sighs> my tea is empty now, and it has been about 20 25 minutes. But yeah, appreciate you guys for tuning in to this kind of podcast type vibe where I'm in my room. I got my motherfucking posters in the background. I got my motherfucking jackets on the rack. And I'm calling this fucking new series the, the Tea Talk or Less Talk or some shit. But yeah, appreciate you guys for sticking around to the end if you make it to the end. Yeah, go ahead and comment below what type of, what are your numbers for powerlifting? You know, currently and what, what do you expect to hit eventually? in the near future like what are your goals for powerlifting um but that's pretty much the end of this video I'm not sure how to close it out powerlifting has been fun i'll go ahead and uh probably maybe make a post about my my singles love i have one last um max out for my squat bench and deadlift but after that man I'm I'm a, I'm gonna be enjoying life, man. I'm gonna be playing basketball more. I'm gonna be playing fucking pickleball more. If you guys never tried pickleball, that shit's fucking addicting. Pickleball is fun to fuck. I'm gonna go on some runs. Like, I feel I feel really bulky and slow nowadays. You know, I wanna I wanna be more quicker on my feet. You know, so yeah, really appreciate you guys for tuning in to this tea time, tea talk, tea time, tea time. But um. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.